Well, umbilical cord stem cells have been transplanted since 1988 now, so the potential is already realised in some ways. Uh, so, so we have the routine transplantation for blood disorders. But in addition to that, in the future, we have the ideas around regenerative medicine and cord blood stem cells have massive potential there because we can potentially make other tissue types and those other tissue types can be used to transplant into patients for example patients suffering from diabetes, blood disorders, bone marrow disorders, uh, heart disorders and so on. So the, the potential of the stem cells is enormous but it's important to say that the current use is also very important because there have been over 20,000 transplants now worldwide and these are for haematological disorders, so leukemias and blood disorders, and the success rate for those is very good. So we, we are, we're in the situation where we've got a very well established system for the transplantation of cord blood stem cells for blood disorders, and also a massive potential for the future where we're going to be looking at regenerative medicine procedures. So the, the, the future is very bright. Yeah, I think the, the stem cells found in the cord tissue are actually very exciting stem cells. They're called mesenchymal stem cells and they can make various body tissues. They can make bone, muscle, connective tissue. And so we have a, a potential source in the cord tissue itself for the repair of a range of tissue in the body. For example, if someone damages their tendon, uh, potentially we could use cord tissue cells to actually repair that tendon. And so this is the new concept of regenerative medicine which is coming through uh, uh, the, the practice of clinical medicine now. And it's, it's a very exciting and very interesting time that, and, uh, that we're in where we can use these stem cells to treat a range of diseases. So the principle behind regenerative medicine is to take stem cells and to use them to repair different tissues in the body. There's not one best sort of stem cell. Um, for example, adult bone marrow has been transplanted for the past 50 years now. Uh, thousands of people, thousands of lives have been saved and, and people could say, well, that's the best stem cell. Uh, but we are starting to understand stem cell technology more and more. Now, when we say what is the best, well, it depends on what your application is, really. Um, adult stem cells are very good for certain things. Adult bone marrow has massive potential. For example, it's currently being used in the treatment of myocardial infarction or heart attack, which is really exciting. Um, cord blood stem cells, I believe, are immensely valuable. Um, I've been working with them for over 30 years now and have been involved in transplantations. And then, of course, we've got the cord tissue. Um, but there are other sorts of, well, there are stem cells in the liver, in the brain, in the skin, uh, and we don't really understand what those do or can do at the moment. Um, in addition, in cord blood, there's also a type of stem cell called the very small embryonic-like stem cell, which is very interesting because it seems to be the primitive stem cell of all. And it could be that this is actually the stem cell of all stem cells, which is an interesting concept. Um, and so, so the, these different types all have different pros and cons, but I think what we need to do in stem cell technology is to look at the overview, uh, look at our patients and see which stem cells are best for our patients. Uh, since about 1980 I've been working on cord blood stem cells. My particular interest is the repair of nervous tissue using cord blood stem cells. So this involves the growth of the cells in the laboratory, producing neurons, and then developing techniques and procedures whereby that could be used clinically. Um, we're certainly not there yet, but we can very easily make the cells in the laboratory. Uh, taking it from the lab to the patient is a big leap. Uh, but we're, we're working on that just now. So that's my main area of interest in, in the research. But of course I have worked on all types of stem cells, skin, liver, bone marrow, um, and the differentiation and the transplantation of them is my main interest. Family cord blood banks are extremely useful. Um, the, the point about a family bank is that it, the, the cord blood is collected and it's processed and stored and it's used or potentially used for transplant within the family. Now, most of the transplants that I've been involved with from family banks have been to siblings or to parents and very occasionally to grandparents. 
Now that's achievable because of the flexibility of cord blood. We can transplant with, a certain, with a, up to a 50% mismatch and that makes it very flexible to use. So if a family has a cord blood unit stored, the chances of it being useful for a family member is very high. And that's why family banking is important, I believe, because it provides a resource of stem cells for the family to use as and when they need them. And the important thing is that they are there immediately that they're needed. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of patients over the years who unfortunately have waited for stem cell transplants and have not been able to get them. But if you have your cord blood stem cells in a family bank and the need arises with the family, they are ready immediately and there's no delay and the patient can be treated. So uh, I, I think cord blood banking for the family is an important and clinically effective process. Related transplantation from a family bank is uh, fully established. It's a clinical procedure and it does have its advantages because the cells are there readily available, ready to go. Immunologically, it's also better because the match is quite often closer. Having said that, the public banks have a massive role to play and indeed most of the cord blood transplants that have occurred have been from the public banks because they have more stored and they release more. Um, so public banking is incredibly important. In my, my own work at the moment, we transplant cord blood from public banks into children and, and that is very effective. The success rate is about 70%. Uh, and uh, it is a very important process. So both public or related and unrelated are extremely important um, and I don't think it's, a, uh, don't think it's a, a good idea to try and pull them apart but they work together and together they can give us the most effective treatment for um, disease in the future.